My name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers, and it is Friday, so that means it's another page in our page by page collaboration with Kyung Shotwell. And of course, her links are all going to be below. Um, I'm trying to talk in a lower tone because it is 4 30 in the morning, and I um, have a new neighbor upstairs, and I'm trying to be um, cooperative and extra quiet. So, um, this week we are on week 18 and the prompt is letters now it could be letters as in a letter letters as in a letter to someone or letters as in a sentence a phrase you know a saying so um we're on page 18 which is way the heck back here Okay, so what I did is I've gone ahead and inked the page. It's probably hard to see on camera. Um, and so we're ready to go with that part of it. So let me set this to the side. We've only got 19 and 20 left to go, and then we're going to start our new series. Yay! Which is going to be part two. <laughs> so what you're going to need, you're going to need the um, kit papers, and the kit that I'm using is Gardener's Blush by The Journal Boat. And you're also going to need some ink. Now I'm using two colors. I'm using sponge sugar and antique linen, mainly antique linen. We're just using the sponge sugar to do our stencil. So you're going to need a stencil. This is one I made. Um, so you can use one that you've got, one that you've made, one that you've borrowed <laughs> and never took back. So um, then you're also going to need magnets. Yes, today is a magnet day. And we're also going to need, um, let's see, what else do we need? I think that's all we need. We need, um, obviously we need paper. And um, I was going to have us use cream colored paper, which I think I still have on here as the backing I do for the writing card. Um, I may change my mind at the very end and put you guys on pause. So, um, and print out another paper there's another paper in this kit that I think might work. So as you can see, I've gone for uh, letters as in a letter. And then the um, ephemera for this kit also has words. Those are letters. And then we also have flowers and of course, butterflies, flutterbys. So this should be the butterfly book, huh? What do you think? <laughs> so we're gonna set those to the side for right now. And of course, I've got my ink testing page where I decided on what color ink to use. And what you do is you just take a white piece of paper and you just test a bunch of different colors until you find the color you like. I chose antique linen because it was the closest color I had to these little spots here. And I thought that would complement it well. Okay, so I tried uh, tattered rose, scattered straw, tea dye, uh, shaded lilac because I thought it might go well with this purple but it didn't it's too blue and then abandoned coral because believe it or not the abandoned coral is more of a pink color and I thought it would go with uh, this color in here but it was too dark okay this is my test stencils so I could decide on what color I wanted to make my stencil just keep that in mind when you're setting up a page okay so now, today's page, it looks like there's a lot of page pieces to it, and um, I guess technically there are, but um, this is going to be a very easy page for you guys. Okay, so this is our page paper, which I think is very, very pretty. And then we're going to add a flap, and the flap is going to be almost the whole size of the of the page it's going to hide our beautiful picture because the beautiful picture is going to be revealed later ta-da as a surprise all right and so that's all we're going to do with that we're going to add a pocket to the front we're going to add a pocket to the page itself and then we're going to add a writing card so it's going to be really pretty and we're going to stencil our writing card so let's set our stencil over there for right now okay so let's set this stuff aside we're not going to need it right away. Let's talk about our um, flap. Now the flap, let me get the pages 
or the papers for the flap out of the way. Okay. You'll notice I'm still using my little pieces of paper on everything. So the flip out for this is going to come from the left because of the way the which side of the the book the page is on. This is going to be the center so we can't have it flip out this way. All right. And um, this is going to flip out from the left. Before I scored it, it was five by eight and a quarter. My pages are uh, five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then I put a half inch score mark along the edge with my scoreboard, which is this this guy right here. Oh, you're also going to need some brushes for the stenciling. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. I might try and experiment with the stenciling. We've got enough cream colored paper that we can. So you just put it on your scoreboard. I don't like to score, even though we're putting it on the left. Obviously, it doesn't matter at this point. So I'm going to score it from over here because it's easier to reach. So you go in a half an inch from the edge of the paper. You use your score tool and you make a score mark all the way down. And then we're going to ink everything. So um, I would have liked to use cream with this, but um, our book pages are white. So whited. So then you're going to fold it and then you're going to use your bone folder to crease it. And then that's going to give you a nice sharp edge. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue the flap onto our page. So all we're going to do is we're going to put glue along the edge of this part where we scored and then we're going to put it up against the page because the flap is the full height of the page and then we're just going to fold it over and make sure everything is lined up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Remember the page is going to be glued to the, or the paper is going to be glued to the page. I don't know. If I call this the page, it's really the paper. So just indulge me with my mistakes. So we're going to put this on here. I'm going to fold it over. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our glue seepage. Fold this over. Make sure everything's lined up, which it could go up just a smidge. That's why I usually put more glue on. Let's give us some wiggle room here. This will allow it to slide. And at this point, um, it doesn't matter which way you fold the flap as long as the flap is on this side. Okay, now let's slide it. Okay. Why am I having so much trouble putting on a flap? Okay. And then we're going to turn the flap this way and ink it because I found a, I found a spot that I forgot to ink.
even though this is on the inside, you, should, you still should ink it. Okay. Which I thought I did ink that. Oh, I inked it on this side. Okay. So now there's our flap. which I'm still not happy with. I'm not happy with where it is on the page. There we go. Now I'm happy. Okay. Well, all right, now let's put our magnet on before we forget. Double check for any glue seepage. There's a couple of things we're going to have to ink as we go along. Be careful if you have any broken pieces, um, save them, but be careful because they're very sharp. I'm going to put a magnet here. I'm going to set a magnet aside, so I'm going to put that on the back of the paper. Get yourself a piece of scotch tape. Tape the magnet. Let's see. In the center and in far enough that when you paper the page, you won't see the, the lump before the magnet is. Close this. Flip your page over, get your other magnet, and it will go right where it's supposed to go. Make sure your paper's flat. You know what I mean? You don't want to bulge the paper up and then drop the magnet and go, okay, that's where it goes. Get another piece of scotch tape. And tape your magnet down. This is going to get glued to the book. This is going to get covered by paper, so both of your magnets are hidden. Okay, so now we can put our magnets away. Okay, now um, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, cover the flap with the paper. Now, this is going to be the front. And this is going to be the back. Now, it doesn't match up exactly. It's not like a hidden anything. But um, I think I want to ink this some more. Don't ask me why I don't have my inking paper down. Just I can see it and I want I can see it so I want to ink it my tablet it's off but it's thinking it's well it's asleep but it's thinking That looks better to me. Okay, so we're going to glue this paper on here. You know, does this paper look a little narrow to you guys? Or is it just me? This paper looks a little narrow to me. 
but see if you put the edge here look how wide the edge is there if you move this over you know what we could do is we could trim the width of the of the flap and that way I don't have to cut a whole new page just be careful of your magnet I think I'm gonna shave a little bit what do we got here oh I'm gonna shave just a little bit off because it won't matter in the scheme of things much better okay let's ink the edge of this where we trimmed it off and I think it matches this color nicely obviously it's not the same So, you know, you can, with a flap, you can open it up and you can trim it. Don't forget to ink the front. Where you've trimmed it. And some little fuzzies hanging on. I think I need a new blade. not this doesn't look inked enough to me so you're just going to have to make decisions as you go along as to whether it's dark enough or not once you get the paper held up to it I might have forgotten to ink the back side of that glue the paper to the inside the back side of this flap is just going to be pretty <laughs> that's all I can say there's not going to be any pocket on the inside as well we're going to put a pocket over here And make sure you put it on right side up okay get it all lined up me it looks like there's a white spot right there it's probably just me and this is not a dark ink and as you'll notice it will stick from the front or the back <laughs> all right let's put the paper on the front of the flap sure it's been inked yes it's what happens when you ink everything ahead of time I try to save time 
on the video and just show you the basic of what I'm doing so that you will know how to do it yourselves not so you will know how to know not so that you will learn how to cut paper except in a couple of cases which we're going to talk about here in just a minute and now this paper which seemed oh so fine before is now too tall it's got all that glue on it we're going to let the glue dry and then we'll come back and trim it well we won't be able to do that will we all of you that are going to gasp And this is why I'm not allowed around sharps because I just sliced my finger. Yep, I didn't get any on there. I don't know why I'm having so much difficulty today. Maybe no one knows. So I had these cut ahead of time and I measured them. We didn't make the flap any shorter. I'm just re-inking areas that look to me like they're not quite inked enough. It's Like I said, it's hard to tell with this ink until you get it up against the paper. Okay. Now we have our inked pocket that we're going to put on the front. It's not intentionally a hidden pocket. I inked all the way around it. make sure my brain hasn't completely lost my head now we do want the writing right side up let's put your fingers on the side you do not want to glue you know when I stuck that over there and cut that um, you do have to be careful I did almost glue my cutter shut once remember your pocket's going to be the width of your paper and not the um, width of the whole art the paper that's covering it not the whole width of the flap okay now we're going to make the writing card for the front And for that, I've chosen this paper. And I've chosen this paper on purpose because A, I really like it, and B, it's got the flowers along the edge so that we can preserve most of it. So let's decide. Let's see how far in our glue goes. That's going to be pretty tight, isn't it? So let's say from here, let's 
I had a pencil from here to here and then we'll try it and then we can always cut it down and then when we trim it um, I want to keep as much of the flowers as possible so we'll trim it from the top to do the height And don't forget, you want to keep in your mind how um, how much you've glued in from the edges. Because you can't just go like this and go, oh, well, the pocket's this wide, so the card will be that wide. And that's just not going to work. See, this is still too wide. So let's trim a little off the edge here. Just go by very small amounts and keep checking. It was a little bit more than I wanted to try. It's about an eighth of an inch, but yeah, that's going to fit in. Take a bone folder and loosen it up just a little bit. Remember, we're going to put a back on the back of that paper, so it's going to be a little bit thicker on the back of the card, I mean. It will help open it up a little bit. Don't be too vigorous. You'll unglue your pocket. Or you can also stretch the paper out, you know what I mean, and then your pocket won't look right. I was looking around for my bone folder because I hadn't put it back in the place where it belonged. That's why when people comment about me not having a lot of stuff laying around in my work area, it's because I want to be able to find everything. Not that other people can't, this is just the way my brain works. Okay, so now let's mark where we want to cut it off. That's still a little snug for me. I'm going to go, I didn't think it was going to end up quite that narrow. I do want to take just a little bit off. I don't want to have to fight to get it in and out of the pocket. Much better. Okay. So now let's mark the height that we want. I'm going down about an eighth of an inch from the top which is more than an eighth of an inch on this paper because the paper stuck out over. It's about a quarter of an inch. I'll cut that off. Okay, I'm going to put you on pause for just one second. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, plus we're going to round the corners. Oh, so you're going to need a corner rounder. Let me grab mine. Must be going to rain today. I broke my ankle about a year and a half ago and now I can always tell. Right now we are going to take this card and we're going to want to make the width of the paper A little bit less so let's move our card a little bit over okay now and then we'll mark a little bit inside we'll erase this little bit of a pencil mark that was left set this in the pocket so we don't misplace it. 
since it now is the size of a scrap in some worlds or an off cut which is poor little scraps getting a bad name for themselves Now let's measure the height. Let's double check our width. Yep, that looks like it's going to be fine. Now we want it to be a little bit shorter so that we have a nice border going around. So we're going to mark it right about here. You can do a border or not. It's totally up to you. Okay. Don't ink anything yet. Let's round the corners on both before you glue them together. Now, let's stencil this before we glue them together so we don't get stenciling around our border. That's going to be pretty, I think. And I didn't, the reason I decided to put a pocket on here, I actually realized I had forgotten. Um, is because um, just opening it up and even though it's gorgeous um, I thought kind of lacked it needed something so we're going to put a pocket on it's not going to be we're not going to try to line it up exactly even though I would like to and make a hidden pocket um, we're going to enhance the pocket with some of the flowers and um, we're going to enhance this side as well we're going to put some extra butterflies in so we're not going to go for the overall, overall, super duper hidden pocket, but um, it is going to line up pretty much the same. So let's get our stencil out. And what I thought I would do is do a stencil of one color in this corner. And I'm going to use the center and line up one of these little line little nodules here with the corner of the paper and then ink one quarter of the stencils worth on the paper so to make it match on the bottom we're going to just line up all three of these not little wide spots the edges of them with the edge of the paper now that we've rounded it now i think the top one should be the tan one now these are not dark colors so you might have to oh, I have to put you on hold again alrighty so let's do the tan at the top and I don't care if it goes over a little bit oh shoot but I do care if it moves Except you can't see it. I can see it on the stencil. So we're just going to keep doing this until we see the darn ink. 
lot of people use antique photo for a lot of things and I I feel like they make such a range of inks that why not use them do you know what I mean why not find a color that um, this is one of my new go-to colors is antique linen um, I really like it I like the color um, it's just a little bit lighter than antique photo well not a little bit it's one shade lighter than tea dye I would say tea dye is another good color and scattered straw is a nice color as well so you might want to think about those colors I bought I think all of the uh, multiple packs that are available now I don't know if you can see that or not but it's very pretty okay now we're gonna flip it over we're gonna take the opposite corner we're gonna line our three little dots up I'm gonna put this one away we're gonna get out the sponge sugar this one's light as well but it's a writing card you know what I mean we don't we're not trying to make a bold statement we just want a hint of the colors to be on here and you could even do the stencil in one color then move the stencil over just a little bit and then do the other color and then it would look like it kind of faded in on the edges and I almost did that on this but these two colors are so light um, you know I thought it might be a problem now this one's going to come in a little bit darker spun sugar as um, a corner um, blending color um, you have to go over it quite a bit to um, get the color when you use it to ink your edges it's the same way okay the joys of stenciling let's get it out here just a little bit further There we go. Probably see that one a lot better. Now we've got our stencils. Now we're going to ink the edge. So yeah they have a uh, the people with the howling dogs moved out yay but now that means my dog is the dog the dog that barks poor little guy I have no idea why he's 11 years old you think he would know by now that noises on the stairs are just noises on the stairs but you no know, I've always felt bad about that don't get me wrong but now now we only have to ink one side of the writing card because we're going to glue it together but we need to um, ink both sides of this part of the writing card because you're going to see the edge so now that we've cut that we're going to have to ink it I know inking is fun sort of like the joys of stenciling but what are you gonna do okay. 
one. Flip it over. This card's gonna gonna be pretty. awfully long and narrow isn't it <laughs> we're on the home stretch I know you don't believe me but we are and color meets color okay make sure when you're gluing them together that you glue the stencil side out Didn't want to go to all that work for nothing I almost slid that up underneath of my writing card when I was gluing it now it doesn't matter um, which side you put to the top. I think the lighter color should be at the top. That's just me. Ooh, I just got glue on my finger right where I cut it. Mm. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I so highly do not recommend it. Okay. So there's our writing card. So we can put that in there. How oh, pretty. Okay. So we have a writing card on writing, which has letters. Now let's open this up. The only thing we have left to do is put our pocket. We're not going to put anything in the pocket. Um, the pocket is going to be for uh, Kyung to decide whatever she wants to put in it. Any kind of tags or, um, you know, note, note paper. You know, we could put some coffee dyed paper in there. Um, I just don't want to cover the picture up for now. Okay, so let's take this side with the chair and we'll line it up at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to line it up with the bottom. Let's see. And let's decide how high up do we want the pocket to go? I say right above this flower. So let's mark the width. Now, I don't want that too close. I don't want it to bind with the flap. Okay, let's go with that width. You know, I could have just pencil out of mouth. I could have just measured it at five and a quarter, couldn't I? No, oh, that's right where my line is. Okay, 
now let's measure how tall we want it to be. Oh, we decided we wanted it right above the flower. We, me, myself, and I, and you guys. So I guess it is going to be a hidden pocket. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll glue it on here and the way to make sure that it's straight is to check these chair legs. Okay. I'm not a big fan of the, the pre-inking where the people put the color around the edges. Um, rather decide my own color. And a lot of times you'll, not, you'll notice that I cut that off. Um, but in this case, I did not. Okay. A little pencil line is right there. So it was a little bit less than five and a quarter. Just a smidge, maybe a sixteenth. I'm going to go by my pencil mark, which seems to line everything up. It's just off by just a smidge. My stool seems to keep rolling around. <laughs> so I'm just over here rolling around. I'm not hanging around. I'm rolling around. I have the bad habit of rocking back and forth on the stool, you know, turning it back and forth. So if you can see that on camera, I apologize. <laughs> not. Sorry, not sorry. Much better. So there's our pocket. which somehow is completely lined up except for this little spot right here. The flowers, everything. Okay, so we've got a pocket here. We're not gonna do anything here. We're gonna decorate. So let's take a look at the flowers and stuff that we have. And let's decide on a placement. Let's see if we want to put a word or two. 
keeping in with the spirit. of our word. Hmm, I think inspire or imagine. You could sit in your chair. You can imagine anything. I'm wondering if I want to leave just a little white border around it. Imagine using letters on a page that's supposed to have letters on it. <laughs> I don't have just an individual letter to put somewhere. <laughs> or I would be like, letters, you want letters? I'll give you letters. <laughs> letters and flowers. This turned into a botanical theme. This, um, section of the book. Okay, like that. You know, what if I took one of the flowers? I have double the number of flowers because I had a misprint, but all the, I have double the number of butterflies as well, um, but all the flowers and butterflies were savable. So I have six flowers instead of three. So I'm thinking maybe this middle sized one have it stick up here and then put the word imagine on it. Hmm. I think the word is too big for the flower. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like the square, I mean the rectangle right through the middle of the flower. Must be why I like it down here too. Should have got some cheesecloth, maybe. This book is getting so fat, though, I'm so afraid to add too much more, you know, volume. Now, now we have the ability to add dimension. I think I am still going to put this where it sticks up over the pocket. And then we put a little one in the chair. Oh, like that. Let's go ahead and put him in. The flower just fell, landed in the chair. So you have to imagine yourself sitting in the chair while you're sitting on a flower. Okay. Let's put this one in. Now this has a little corner here, so let's put that to the bottom. Hmm. All the other ones have the lighter color on the top. Let's be rebels. I just don't want that part to get snagged on anything. I 
I glued the whole thing. Overzealous. Overglueous. Wow, that glue really hurts. Look at this. I can't believe I did this on my finger on the paper trimmer. Okay. So I like that. Oh, we've got this flower. I don't want to cover up this purple one. Mm-mm. I still like the idea of one right here. I'll have it stick up past the top of the pocket. Put my fingers in the part I don't want to glue. That gives a little bit of dimension. And I don't think I'm going to use the rest of these, these last three. Hmm. She says as she looks at gluing the last little one on. Yeah. Yes, he is getting glued on. Now the reason that these kind of pop out a little bit more than the ones that are printed is because I inked around them. And I inked around them in the tea, antique linen. I almost said tea dye. Which isn't really that dark. But it is enough that we will... Um, be able to see the little bit of a shadow. Okay, so we'll be able to see that little bit of a shadow. Um, so over here, you have all sorts of flutterbys. So let's add some more that we've inked. I think those two would be enough. Let's add couple of smaller ones. I don't know. What about a big one? Yeah, let's do that. And that'll be enough. So we'll have two flowers and two butterflies left over. Seems only right. So, Kyung, remember, there is an actual pocket here <laughs> for you to use, even though it doesn't look like it. Now, I'm trying to pick this one up off the page. Does that mean I need new glasses? I do not know. That's going to be our page. I like it. Should we put one of the other butterflies on the front? Oh, yes, I think we should. I definitely think we should. You know, if it was me, I would put both, but no. No, we're going to go for subtle. We're just going to go for one. We're just going to hint at things to come when you open the flap. If I get glue in my cut one more time. I'm 
going to have a lot of glue scraping to do. It's all right when I scrape up and I have all those little sh shavings of um, glue everywhere, I just break out my little ladybug vacuum. Sorry about that slurp. So all we need to do now, and the way I'm putting the save our flowers and our butterflies, and we'll put them in with the flowers and the butterflies. Ephemera boxes that I have. Okay, so let's get our book. Should we put something here? maybe inspire would work well here I wish I hadn't inked around the other one. Oh, this has a little piece of... something on it. Let's see what it looks like once we ink it. Yeah, I think I can see that red too much. There's a little piece of... or like a little touch of ink on there. Darn. I have another set of these words because I had a double print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the word inspire here, but I don't have the double set of words right here in front of me, I believe. Let me look real quick while we're here. I should have them, but I don't. I thought I had them in my scrap pile for this page, but I don't. All right, so I will, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So I do have them. Put these duplicates in with the scraps. I'm keeping all the um, scraps from the book. Um, well, I didn't think to start from the very first page, but about halfway through, I realized that I hadn't been collecting for my collage. Now, I do a collage at the end of most of my projects with the um, scraps. Now, what did I use in here? I used Imagine. So let's use Inspire. Yep, yep, I think that's going to be the best. Um, and so I make a collage and then I put it on the wall and it's like having my book on the wall right in front of me and not on a shelf. I don't, um, I haven't been selling my books. Um, occasionally I give them away. Um, occasionally I use them for giveaways when we have milestones with the group and hopefully we'll have one coming up or we hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And when we do that, then I will definitely have um, another drawing and the uh, first plot first place prize will be, what am I doing here, will be uh, a book. So get your friends to subscribe and uh, when we get to a thousand we'll have another contest or another drawing. And um, we'll have another book to go. That is my promise to you. Okay. 
Now, do I want it? No, I want it over here because this word is over there. Do I want it up here? Hmm. Yes, I kind of like it up here. All right, let's put it at the top. It's flying up with the butterfly. You know, I'm not even getting the glue on the cut, just the fumes from the glue. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see if I can complain about that some more. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I could. I think I could if I tried hard enough, but I don't think I will. <laughs> All right, so let's open up our book. Okay, we're gluing it on here, and we obviously can't glue it on in this state. So we're going to turn this sideways. All my sunflower tags are falling out. This is flat as it's going to get. Let's glue this down. So, I think this page turned out pretty. I hope you guys do too. And again, this kit was by the Journal Boat. I really like their her kits. Um, I can't believe I forgot her name. I do know it though. Okay, let's get this in here. Oh look and you can see part of the butterfly, part of the flower. Nice. I almost went with this stripe um, back here with another pocket, but then I looked at it and I said no. Now, I could have gone with another hidden pocket here. You know, I could go back and add one. That would be fine too. But um, I really like the idea that this pocket is hidden. It can be used, um, but only the book owner knows that it's there, which is key. Okay, so now, This goes in like this, this goes like this, and then this goes like this, and there's our page. We've got our writing card with our stenciling on the back, made it pretty. What is up with me? I'm putting things in pockets. Anyway, we've got Inspire and a butterfly, and we open this up. We have our really pretty spread that looks like a beautiful garden. We have lots of butterflies, and we have a hidden pocket that no one, no one but us, knows is there. And even I am having difficulty finding it. Let me make sure that that... Flower. Didn't. No, nope, it didn't. Just want to make sure it didn't glue the pocket shut. That it, you know there was no little little uh, remnant of glue. Okay, so that's our page, and that's our episode this week of Page by Page with Kyung Shotwell. And um, I will see you guys next Friday. Where we'll be doing page 19. The week after that will be 20. We originally were going to be done, but no, no, no. Don't get your tears up in your eyes. We're going to keep going. We're going to start a new signature. And we have a whole new prompt list. There's a hundred prompts. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to alternate, alternately pick a, a prompt again. But it can only be from that list. So that way we don't have to kind of think up a prompt. Uh, on our own. We've already thought of them all. 
there's going to be two wild cards and the wild cards are going to represent where um, there's one for each of us and um, if you pick the wild card you get to pick up to three prompts to use on one page um, and they don't get marked off and so it's like a freebie now I'm hoping that Keon won't go crazy you know and pick uh, I don't know what grungy floral steampunk or something <laughs> please don't do that Keon um, and so um, I was supposed to think of a prompt for next week and I forgot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the prompt on the screen below and uh, that way you guys will see what it is because I totally forgot that Keong had picked letters and that I was supposed to pick the prompt this time so if you look on your screen right now just right now right right now then you will see <laughs> see the prompt for next week all right this is Terry Lee and uh, this is I am Terry Lee and I will see you again next week in the uh, page by page uh, collaboration with Keong Shotwell and uh, that's it for me. I'm out of here. <laughs>